Hello everyone, Only Draven here again, and today we're doing another tutorial in Minecraft Sky Factory 4. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build and use the Induction Matrix, which is a build from inside the Mechanism mod. The Induction Matrix is a build or block that allows you to store incredibly large amounts of RF power and to transfer power in and out of it. Now, if you find this video helpful and you like it, please be sure to click like. Most importantly, please remember to hit that subscribe button and the little bell notifications. That way you'll be able to see any time a tutorial or video comes out. All right, so a few components we're going to look at today. First thing we're going to need is induction casings. Uh, this is going to be the primary component we build the outer shell with. Uh, that is just going to be four steel ingots and an energy tablet. Next, we're going to be using induction ports. You'll need at least two of these. And you're going to need four of those induction casings and an elite control circuit. One of those. We're also going to need basic induction cells. Now, these, the amount you need is going to depend on how big you're building your matrix. Uh, so we'll look into that in a moment. But uh, you're going to start with a basic energy cube, four lithium dust, and four energy tablets. And you're also going to need basic induction providers. In the same situation, the amount you use will depend on the size of your build. That's also going to be a basic energy cube, going to be lithium dust, and four basic control circuits. The last thing we're going to need is a configurator. That one's easy. It's just a stick, energy tablet, lapis, and two enriched alloys. Now, for these two components here, you'll notice they say basic induction cell and basic induction provider. There are more, are more advanced versions of those. So there's the advanced induction cell, elite induction cell, all the way up to ultimate induction cell. And the recipes are pretty much the same, except you're going to be replacing the outer edges here with the basics. So you need four of the basics to make uh, the advanced you need four of the advanced to make an elite, four of the elite to make ultimate. Same kind of process. These also exist in the same uh, component structure for the providers. Basic one, and you're going to go up to a advanced, elite, and ultimate. So whichever, you can mix and match these. They do not have to be the same level inside. Uh, so you can use a couple basics. You could have a couple advanced. That's fine. Um, but I, in, for my builds, I like to do one for one. So for every induction cell, I've got a provider. Uh, I find that to be the best mix. Uh, but you can use the more advanced ones if you don't want to use basics. We're just going to be using the basics for today's example. Let me go ahead and grab those blocks here. So again, the object or the goal of an induction matrix is to store power. So maybe you have a reactor, a reactor, a fission reactor, a fusion reactor, something of that nature that produces more power than you're using. And as it's burning through your fuel, that power is just sitting there being kind of wasted. The matrix can accept that power and then allow you to store that for future use. So the size of it itself has to be a minimum three by three by three. Okay. That's the smallest size matrix you can make. You can go up to a four by four by four. Oops. Uh, for this one, I'm going to be building a five by five by five, just to give kind of a, a good example. You can go up to an 18 by 18 by 18. That is the largest size one that you can make. Now, when you're building this, all of the outer edges have to be made out of uh, casings. Four, there's five. You could do more than just that, but I'm going to kind of show you an example of what I mean by the outer shell. As you see on the bottom, I've already gone and put a complete layer of the casings, but you don't have to. You could leave those bottom three different. But these, what you see right here, the outer shell, the edges have to be casings. The rest of this can be filled with casings or ports based on how many you need. So I'm just going to say here, on this side, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to put one port on the list side. I'm going to put one port on this side, in the middle using the casings. Now, again, you can do it differently. You could have a port on every side. You can have multiple ports on every side. That works perfectly fine. For this example, I'm just using one on each, on two of the different sides. These two sides here, but you can have multiple even on the same side. What the configurator is going to do is if you shift and right click, it'll change its mode from input to output. One of them has to be input, the other one has to be output. 
Okay. Now, other than that, if you have multiple, you can have multiple inputs, multiple outputs, but you're going to need at least one of each. Now, inside is where we're going to put our induction cells and induction providers. Now, let's talk about what those do. So an induction cell, it says here, is what capacitor capable of storing massive amounts of energy in a single block. So our induction cell is what's going to store our power. And this basic one has 400 MRF. That's a lot. The basic induction provider is a complex of coolant systems, which allows you to transfer power in and out of the matrix. So this is what is going to store the power. This is going to determine how much can go in and out of it at one time. Again, as you notice, when we look at the higher levels, it's going to be much 3.2 GRF, 25.6 GRF. So as you can see, it, it, it gets very, very large as you upgrade your components. So inside, for this one, uh, again, this design I'm using is not the design you have to use. You basically just want to have a one for one. Okay, so there's one, two, three, and let's just see, I'll do this here. So I got four of those, right? So there's four of those. I'm going to take this other one. I'm going to go one, two, three, four. So there's four, four. So as you can see, there's still a lot more room in there that I could be adding if I want. They don't have to be in any specific build pattern. That's just how I've put them in there. You can leave empty spaces. You do not have to fill it, but the more you put in there, the more it's going to store and the more it's going to produce. Okay? So obviously, I made a bumble there. Let me fix that. <laughs> I have to build the outer shell. So those should go there. Right. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to complete the shell. <clears throat> if I wanted to, I could put ports over here. I'm not going to. I only wanted the two, one on each. <clears throat> and when I add this last one, See that little red particles? That means you've built it correctly. A little redstone flux there for a moment means everything is working and your matrix is set up. So you can now right-click anywhere on the block and it's going to tell you how much power is being input, how much is, be is outputting out of the block, how much power is stored. This one's storing 1 1.6 GRF, which is a horrendous amount of power for just the few basic blocks I put in there. You can imagine how much that would increase had I filled it or used the more advanced blocks. You can also add items right here in this slot on the right-hand side. If I had a battery I wanted to put in here, it will charge that item and then put it here when it's finished charging. So I can use this to charge items, batteries, blocks, and such as well. And if the input coming in is more than the output, this will start filling up to show you how much power has been stored. You can also click on statistics. To get a little more information, how much it's receiving, how much it's outputting, how much is stored in here, as well as what the size and the blocks I've used to build it. So that's basically how that looks up. So now we just want to see it in working. So let's go ahead and grab a couple blocks here. I've grabbed a creative energy cell. That's something you can only get in creative. And it's unlimited power. Okay. S slap one of these on the side here. And then I have an energy battery, relatively large one. This one's empty. I'm going to set it there. So this one has the ability to hold, as you can see, uh, what's that, 1.6 billion, I believe? That's a lot. And a creative energy cell is going to just create power nonstop. So you can be connecting power from anything. A generator, maybe you're doing a culinary generator with uh, food singularities that's producing tons of power for you. Fission reactor, fusion reactor, matter overdrive reactor, solar, whatever power source you have, this is just taking the place of that for this example, but you're going to hook it up the same way. You can use pretty much any type of cable that will transmit energy. I'm a fan of cyclic cables. I use those, but you can use any of the mechanism cables as well. So now I'm going to go ahead and pop that on here, crank that up. That's an energy extraction cable. Now we go over here, click on our box. Okay. As you can see, the power is filling up. It's got 64.0 KRF is how much is coming into the block. And it's storing it because there's nothing going out. So whatever my power source is, it's now filling this block up. I want to get some of that power out for something. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to right-click my cable the same way on the output. And as you can see, the battery is filling up very, very quickly. So this will move power through it at a very fast rate. And then again, once this fills, which it has, it's just going to go back to filling up again. Now, you can imagine, had I used the ultimate cells and created this 18 by 18 by 18, the massive amount of storage this little build can put together. And 
Recipe wise, it can be a little uh, expensive. You need a lot of iron. You need a lot of steel. You need a lot of lithium dust. Ton of these energy tablets. Uh, but once you get it put together, you really don't ever have to mess with it again. It's just going to store all your power needs. And especially with some of the things like a matter overdrive reactor, which just puts power out insanely. You can imagine again how, much, how great this would be to store a lot of that power for you. And again, we'll right-click on here. And as you can see, it's still filling up. My output is zero because I don't have anything clicked on it. Now, had I put multiple ports coming out, I could have power running to many different types of processes. And so it's going to show how much is coming out on all of those versus input. And if my output is higher than my input, it eventually will drain this battery and I may run into parts where it's no longer producing enough power. So normally it's good to have at least the same amount input as it is output, unless you're comfortable draining whatever you have in here for a temporary experiment or something you're building. You just need a big blast of power to get started. All right. So that's basically everything you need to know about a induction matrix. Um, again, really handy block to have, uh, especially if you want to store large amounts of power. Hypothetically, you're trying to kickstart a fusion reactor or you want to run you know, something massive. You need a lot of power to kickstart it going. Phenomenal block to use. So I highly recommend checking this out. Put one together in your own builds. See what type of cool uh, combinations you can put together. I'd love to hear about it. Uh, well, that's going to do it for this one. Uh, if you have any questions about this tutorial or any of my tutorials, please be sure to put those down in the comments, and I'll do my very best to get back with you as quickly as I possibly can, as well as any recommendations or suggestions you may have for other tutorials you'd like to see in Sky Factory 4. I'm always looking for new ideas. This one was a, a good example of that. This was something recommended in the comments on a previous video. You can also go to my website, OnlyDraven.com, and on the website down at the bottom of the homepage, you'll find a place you can submit questions, feedback, or recommendations via email as well. While you're there, there's a bunch of cool links uh, to all my tutorials, videos, and other stuff you might find useful. Highly recommend checking out the website. But that is going to do us for today. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.